Hello students, welcome to this lecture on the law of equimarginal utility. This law is called by different names. It is also known as the law of maximum satisfaction because it helps us to understand how a consumer can maximize his satisfaction. And it is also known as the law of substitution because it helps us to understand why people substitute one good for another. And therefore, whether it is called the law of equimarginal utility or the law of maximum satisfaction or the law of substitution, they all mean the same. As we had seen earlier, there are two basic laws which become the foundations for the law of demand. The law of diminishing marginal utility, which we discussed in the previous lecture, and the law of equimarginal utility that we are going to discuss today. Therefore, the objectives of this lecture today are firstly, we would like to know what is the law of equimarginal utility about. Secondly, we would like to know how this is useful in making the law of demand operational. And therefore, these two objectives help us to understand how consumers behave and why they behave in a certain manner. Now, what is this law? What does it teach? As we had seen in the earlier lectures, every theory has certain assumptions and the law of demand that we have discussed earlier also had certain assumptions. And one of the assumptions of the law of demand is that the consumer is rational. And when we say that consumer is rational, we mean that he will always try to maximize his satisfaction. And therefore, when we assume that the consumer is rational, we must also know on what basis and how will he be rational or how does he try to maximize his satisfaction. And therefore, the law of equimarginal utility teaches us how a consumer can maximize his satisfaction. In other words, a consumer as we know buys many items, many goods and services. And therefore, the law tries to teach us how he should spread his money, how he should spread his income among the different goods or how he should apportion his expenditure among different goods such that he maximizes his satisfaction. And therefore, this law gives us a clue of how the consumer should spend his income in such a manner that he maximizes his satisfaction. In fact, we had seen in the earlier lectures that a consumer can be at equilibrium or how does he attain equilibrium? When he attains equilibrium, he neither wants to purchase more or less. In other words, that quantity or that combination of goods that he is purchasing are giving him the maximum satisfaction. And therefore, any quantity more than that or less than that would not give him that maximum satisfaction. And therefore, he is said to be at equilibrium. When he reaches equilibrium, he will neither want to purchase more or nor will he want to purchase less of that commodity. And therefore, this law is a very important law and it helps us to understand how the consumer behaves or how he has to spend his money in order to maximize his satisfaction. Now, the law states that when a person wants to maximize his satisfaction, he should spend his money in such a manner that the marginal utility that he derives from all the commodities that he is purchasing are equalized. This law not only applies to the money, but 
any good that he has. Suppose a person has some good which can be used for multiple purposes, then how does he distribute that good among those multiple purposes such that his total satisfaction or his total utility is maximized. And therefore, this applies to anything, maybe you can, we can apply this to any commodity which has multiple use, even time has multiple use and therefore, we can apply this to how we should use time in order to maximize our utility and we can also apply it to money where we try to see how we should apportion expenditure among the various items such that the satisfaction is maximized. And therefore, this law is very, very important. Now, suppose a person is consuming two goods and for each rupee that he spends on these two goods, he is getting more satisfaction on good A say and he is getting lesser satisfaction when he spends the same rupee on good B. Then how he can maximize his satisfaction or utility is that he transfers the amount from B because he gets lesser satisfaction by consuming or by purchasing B. If he transfers that rupee to expenditure on A, then he will be able to get more satisfaction. And therefore, when people are purchasing goods, they try to transfer their expenditures from less utility giving items to more to higher utility giving items. So, in that manner, they sacrifice lower utilities and gain higher utilities and this will go on until the utilities that they derive from each of the commodities, all the commodities get equalized. So, here to understand this law, we must also know that this law assumes that the law of diminishing marginal utility also operates. And therefore, we can say that the law of equimarginal utility is based upon the law of diminishing marginal utility also. So, this can be understood by trying to explain what happens when a person transfers his expenditure from a low utility commodity to a higher utility giving commodity. Now, when the amount is transferred, then he loses some utility by transferring the rupee from the use of or the purchase of B to the purchase of A, but he gains some utility by getting more of A. But the utility that he has lost from by transferring the rupee from commodity B to commodity A will be lesser than the utility that he derives by purchasing more of A. But even in the case of A, when more and more is purchased, the law of diminishing marginal utility operates. And therefore, for each additional rupee that he spends on A, he will be able to receive or derive only lesser and lesser additional satisfaction or utility from it. And therefore, the commodity from where the amount is being transferred in that case you would find will have higher utility whereas the amount is being transferred to from that item you would find that utility is decreasing, the additional utility is decreasing. So, marginal utility increases from the item where the amount has been transferred from and marginal utility will be decreasing in the case of the item to which the amount is being transferred to and thereby at some point of time you would find that the marginal utilities of the two goods are equalized. So, what does this mean? This means that the last rupee spent on each of those items 
will give the consumer equal additional satisfaction or the equal marginal utility. And when such a thing happens, then total utility will be maximized. Now, this can be explained with the help of a table. Now, the table consists of three columns and we are taking into consideration a commodity like steel. Steel can be put to many uses and so if we want to get the maximum utility out of the use of the steel, then we would have to see how it should be spread out. So, let us assume that it has two uses, use x and use y. Suppose the consumer has 8 kgs or 8 units of steel and he wants to distribute these 8 kgs or 8 units of steel among the uses x and y. And suppose he uses 5 units of steel for use y and 3 units of steel for the use x. Then we can see that if he uses 3 units of steel for the use x, he will derive 49 utils of marginal utility. Whereas, if he spends 5 rupees on good on use y, then he would derive 15 utils of satisfaction or utility. So, there here we can see that if he decides to spend 5 units or kgs of steel on use y, he will derive lesser utility and when he spends 3, the remaining 3 rupees on use x, he will derive more satisfaction that or more additional satisfaction which is 49 utils and therefore, we can see that the last rupee spent on each of these uses is not giving him maximum satisfaction. But then the consumer may try to transfer 1 kg of steel from the use of y to the use of x. By transferring 1 kg from y, he loses 15 utils of marginal utility. Whereas, by spending 1 more rupee on use x, he will be deriving 35 utils of marginal utility and therefore, total utility will increase by transferring the 1 kg of steel from lesser utility giving use to a higher utility giving use. And therefore, this will go on until he ultimately lands up by spending 5 kgs or using 5 kgs for x and 3 kgs for use y. In this situation, you find that in both the cases in the use x and use y, the marginal utility is equated to 30. When we total up all the marginal utility that you derive from each of these uses, it will be found that the marginal utility or the total utility is maximized. And therefore, this law teaches us how a consumer can also spend his money on different items in, uh, so that he derives maximum satisfaction from his expenditure. Now, we can understand the same thing by trying to look at a diagram. The diagram has two marginal utility curves d d and d 1 d 1 and you can see that on the vertical axis we are measuring marginal utility and on the horizontal axis we are measuring money that is spent. Now, if O m amount is spent on d d and O m 1 amount is spent on d 1 d 1, we can see that the marginal utility is equated. 
in such a case the consumer will get maximum satisfaction because the marginal utility of the two goods is equated. Any other distribution of money will not give him as much total satisfaction as this combination gives him. For example, if he spends one unit lesser on D1, D1 and spends one rupee more on D, D, we find that the area below those curves, you find that the area changes. The area under D1, D1 is greater than the area under D, D due to the change. In other words, the rectangle and the triangle that are formed under each of those curves due to the change in expenditure show us that when he spends one rupee less on D1, D1, the loss is greater than when he spends more on D, D, he, he has a gain, but the gain is lesser than the loss. So, if a consumer constantly tries to reallocate his expenditure, but during the course of re-expenditure, he comes to a situation where the marginal utilities are equal, equalized, then that will give him maximum utility or total utility will be maximized at that point. But if he continues to re reallocate even after that or if he tries to, uh, if he tries to reallocate his expenditure, then it will be found that his total utility will be lesser than before because no matter how he reallocates his expenditure, the, the gain will be lesser than the loss. This graph explains to you clearly that once a consumer reaches a point where the marginal utilities from the various commodities that he consumes are equalized, then he should stop or he should be at equilibrium. That is because he can be at equilibrium because that is where he maximizes his satisfaction. So, let us summarize what we have learned today. In part 1 of the topic equimarginal utility, the law of equimarginal utility, we have tried to discuss about what the law is and how it can be applied. And we saw that any item or commodity that a person has which has multiple use must be put to its best use. So, that the total utility derived from its use gets maximized and therefore, we saw that this can happen if the person transfers the use of that commodity from the use that gives him lesser marginal, lesser additional or marginal utility to a commodity or to a use where marginal utility is greater. And ultimately, because of the operation of the law of diminishing marginal utility, the marginal utility of the item of the use where it is transferred from begins to increase and the marginal utility of the use where it is transferred to decreases because of the law of diminishing marginal utility and ultimately at some point of time both the marginal utilities will be equated and that is where the consumer will get maximum utility. His total utility will be maximized in other words and even after that if he tries to make further changes then no matter from where he transfers to where the use of that commodity, his total utility will not be maximum. And therefore, the law teaches us that if you are trying to use a commodity which has multiple uses, then you must allocate it in such a manner 
among its uses such that the marginal utilities derived from both the commodities should be equated ultimately. This will give maximum total satisfaction. Now, two questions are sought to be asked. The first question is what is the concept of equimarginal utility or explain the concept of equimarginal utility. The second is explain how total satisfaction or total utility can be maximized by the use of the law of equimarginal utility. Now, for the references, you have a number of books that are prescribed by the UGC. So, those books can be referred, but uh, two other books also can be referred if you can get hold of them. Number one, Principles of Economics by N. Gregory Mankiw, and number two, Microeconomics by Pindic 